Hey everybody, Joy here. Today is August 12, 2020. And for the last several days I've been making videos for you on how to make New Look 6217. Several people asked me to show you how I did my fitting adjustments, how I cut it out, and how I sew it. So for a lot of you, this is going to be like watching paint dry. <laughs> but for you that are new to my channel, welcome, welcome. I have hundreds and hundreds of new subscribers, and I'm so, so excited to have you here. This pattern is a boat neck with a dolman sleeve. Now through my video, I called it a raglan sleeve over and over and over. I tried to cut out all the references to a raglan sleeve so I didn't confuse you. <laughs> It's a dolman sleeve. What's the difference? A dolman sleeve is just part of the top. The top just continues into the sleeve. A raglan sleeve is sewn on at an angle down from the neck. So it is an actual sleeve that you sew on. So this is a dolman. Some people over there in England call it a grown-on sleeve. <laughs> I don't know how it grew there, but... Anyway, my first introduction to this video disappeared somehow so i'm doing this the video was all done i probably had four hours of video that i have edited down into about two hours now so since it's so long i've chopped it into two videos okay so we're going to start right here right now with me showing you how i did the round back the sway back and the full bust adjustment I believe this first video ends at me showing you how to do all the pattern adjustments that I did. Okay, and then I say I'm going to go find some fabric, and then you'll go to part two, and part two will show you how I lay out the pattern on the fabric, how I cut it out, and how I sew it all together from beginning to end. And I know you're saying, what top are you wearing, Joy? This is the Style Arc Kim Swing Top. It's made out of knit, and it is my number one most favorite knit top. I've probably made it a dozen times, and so has Philly, and so has Terry. It's very easy to make. I still had to do my adjustments to it, like every other pattern. But if you like this one, look up Style Arc, the Kim pattern. And always, always remember to look below in the description box for links. So let's start part one right here, right now. My goodness, the drama's already begun. I was right in the middle of talking to you and my battery went dead. <laughs> okay, we've chosen view B. We get out our directions, we find the illustration for view B. View B says, you need pieces five and six. How awesome is that? Two pieces to make this awesome blouse. So I'm going to find five and six, and I'm gonna get rid of the rest of it. Oh, and there's five. Ooh, and I throw the part I'm not using on the floor. And I will pick it up later, I promise. I always do. Alright, so I'm going to rough cut out piece number five. And there it is, piece number five. And we'll put it up here, and now I'm going to find piece number six which is right next to piece number five. All right. Now, we have taken all of this paper and we've turned it into two manageable pieces of paper. Okay? To me, it is much, much easier to just work with what you need. And I'm still gonna cut off the extra there. Now, the next thing I always, always do is iron my paper because the paper is very, very wrinkled. So I'm gonna go turn on my iron. Then I'm going to measure myself again. I measure myself all the time, just to be sure. Now, I pick my pattern by the size of my upper bust up here. And unless it's changed recently, I'm 36. And if you put your head way down flat like that, you can see, yes, I'm still 36. 
So I am going to choose the size pattern that goes with a size 36 bust, even though my full bust is 42. And I'm going to use the 36, and then I'm going to put a full bust adjustment in it. Why? Why don't I just use the 42? The reason I don't use the 42 is they make the 42 bust for somebody who has 42 up here. My bust is different than a lot of bust. Yours is different than a lot of bust. A lot of people are full way up here. Their bust starts up here and they're full. You know, they come out of their bra cups. I don't. I'm way inside my bra cups. <laughs> and I'm little up here. I'm little from here to here. Nancy Zeman has a system where you measure yourself from the crack right here, right here. You know, you have a crack where your arm, put your arm down, you have crack. Measure from that crack to this crack. That measurement, she tells you what size pattern to make. I don't know what I am right now, but I used to be, whatever I was across there said I needed to start with a size 8 pattern. Size 8. So that just tells you how different you can be up here in this part compared to what you are down here where your full bust is. Now I know a lot of you, because you have sewing channels and I see you measure yourself, and I see your clothes and you're very, very full up here. So you can just cut out the 42 or the 46 or the whatever and it fits you great, but I cannot do that because if I cut out a 42 up here, the shoulder's gonna be way out here on me and the top is just gonna hang open like this, it's just gonna gap. So, if I start with what I need up here and then make it bigger from the bust down, it works just perfect and I'm gonna show you how I do it. I'll be back after I iron my paper. I've ironed my pattern, my front and my back. And I'm going to start with the back because the back is the easiest. So I have not cut it out yet. Now, I am taking my upper bust to cut the pattern out. But you also have to take in consideration your waist and your hip in the pattern. According to your waist and your hip, what size would you take in the pattern? In the front, we're going to do an FBA. We are going to add over an inch FBA on half the pattern because we're only doing half the front. So when you do the two fronts you have over two inches. So you're going to add over two inches width all the way up and down in the front pattern except up in the shoulders. All the way up to your bust and down. Let's put it that way. Above your bust it's still going to be the same small size for a 36. And I'm going to be making a 14. So for my bust up I'll be a 14. From the bust down, I'll be a 14 with the FBA in the front, in the back. I'm not doing an FBA in the upper back. I'm cutting a size 14 in the back, and I don't have boobs in the back. So the size 14 in the back is going to fit me great through the shoulders. Your shoulders are the same, front and back. I'm 15 from shoulder tip to shoulder tip, front and back. It doesn't change. Okay? But the size 14 that I'm cutting out, the back, may not be big enough in the waist and it may not be big enough in your hip. The front will be fine because we're adding two inches to it, but we aren't in the back. So I have measured me from side seam to side seam. Play like you got a side seam on your body. I've measured my waist in the back, side seam to side seam, and I've measured my rear end. Fullest part, side seam to side seam. Then I found the size 14 line then I marked 5 8 inch in from it at the waist and at the hip. Size 14, mark the seam allowance. Measure from center back to the seam allowance. Is that going to be enough for your waist? It wasn't going to be, it's going to be fine for my waist. Then check your hip. Is it going to be enough for your hip? This pattern is full. It's supposed to have ease. The pattern company put four inches of ease. How much ease do you want? So I was fine at the waist. I had plenty at the waist. But down at my full hip, I needed to go out to a size 16 in the back. All right? So I simply made this line. Let me see if you can see it up close. I simply made a line. I think you can see it. 
from the size 14 out to the 16 down here at my hip. How did I know where to go to? I measured down six inches to where the fattest part of my rear end is. All right? So that's the only difference in the back before I trim it. So I'm going to trim it 16 at the bottom, go up that orange line that I drew, which is a friction marker. Go out to the 14. Let me see. I think I just lost track of the 14 here. It's got all these little lines, little dots, you know, dot to dot. Let me do the 14 up here. Okay, we're starting to look like a pattern. Look here. Starting to look like a pattern. <laughs> Only my two easy pieces. I'm trimming the bottom to... Am I going to trim it to the 14 or the 16? Because the 16 comes down farther than the 14. And I'm using the 16 for the width at my hip, but I don't need the length. So I'm cutting on the 14 line at the bottom. Does that make sense? All right, I'll show you that in a second, how I did that. Now, you don't really have to trim this line that goes on the fold unless... Unless it's a line that doesn't go on the fold, and it is. It's a line that doesn't go on the fold. Now, because I have made this pattern before, I know that I can get this over my head easily without this center back seam. So, I am going to mark 5 8 inch from this center back seam. Let me get a ruler. I'm going to mark 5 8 inch in because they gave you 5 8 inch on the pattern. I'm not going to use it. They want you to put a keyhole opening up at the top and put a button and a hook, a button and a buttonhole, or a hook and a eye, or a something. And because I've made it before, I know I don't need that to get into this. So I am marking center back, center back, and these pins, I'll tell you what, these friction pins are nice, but I tell you what, they don't have hardly any ink in them. They run out of ink so fast. All right, so let me show you what I did. I marked the 5 8 inch line, and I called it center back. I'm not going to cut that off because I just want to know in the future that this pattern called for 5 8 inch there. So when I lay this out to cut it out, I will put my new orange line on the fold. All right? Now, in my case i know i have to have a sway back and a round back in every single thing i make so i'm just going to leave this like it is um, i don't want to cut that off like i said because i want it to look like the original pattern later i'm going to line it up straight straight with that line if there's a, a grain line, you can line it up with it, or you can line it up with this back line if it's straight. And I'm going to cut it. And I'm going to cut it all the way across to... They started doing this different at Palmer and Plesh, and so I started doing it different. So I'm trying to think, do I want to do it the different, or do I want to do it the same? I'm going to do it my old-fashioned way. There's two different ways that you can do this round back. You, if you're up close to your back neck where you're round, you can cut it over and up to the shoulder. But if you're round lower down, you cut it all the way across. And that's what I'm going to do because I'm lower a little bit further down. And try to make it stay. This is I need my weight, so let's get a weight on here so it'll quit moving around. And I'm going to cut all the way over to the seam allowance draw your seam allowance in over here where you're going to because you're only going to cut two not through to the seam allowance to it if you go all the way to the edge i don't think it makes that much difference i really don't but that's the rules and so i'm going to follow the rules all right and i'm going to add a one inch round back into this I just spread this. Here I've got this happy face. You can see here, I hope. Here on my black shirt, you can see. See, it was together. 
This is the back. This is the shoulder. This is the neck. This is the sleeve. I cut the line. Things are all wobbly, you know, after you cut them. I cut the line straight across. See? Straight across, and I'm going to open it up. Look on my shirt. I'm going to open it up. Sorry, guys. This is real silly. Now I have a hump right here. <laughs> I'm going to open this up one inch over here on the seam line, on the center back line. I'm not going to do it out at the edge where they wanted to add 5 8 inch. I'm going to spread it one inch at center back. And then I'm going to put some paper in there. Okay? So. Let me get some colored paper so you can see it better. I'm going to use some green paper so you can see what it looks like when I put it in. It may not be wide enough. And it's not, but that's all right. I'm still going to do one inch. So you have to have some tape. Okay, so I'm going to add an inch. Why am I adding an inch? Because I just happen to know that if I don't add at least an inch, that the tops pull back. I'm always going like this, pulling them forward. All right, so we're going to go to there. And we're going to spread it out nice and flat. This is the flat pattern method, as Peggy Sagers always says. So we have to keep it flat when we're making all of our changes. This is fun to do for me. Philly and I like this part. We've been through miles of tape, both of us. <laughs> we like this part. We love the outcome when we do this part is what we really like. Okay, I'm going to cut a sliver to put over there where I didn't have enough. And I'll show it to you. Stay with me. Alrighty. Now remember, I'm going to put this on the fold. This is going to be a little bit rounded over here. It doesn't matter. We're going to play like it's straight. We're going to put the center back up here at the fold, and we're going to put the center back down here at the fold, and whatever happens in between, we're just going to not pay any attention to that because it doesn't matter. Okay, now there's one other thing I have to do to the center back. How do you know if you need this? If the tops that you make or the clothes that you wear, if the side seam doesn't hang straight down your side, if it comes forward, I don't know what this one does because I didn't make this, but if it comes forward, that means it needs to be pulled back to be straight, and I think this one probably does because it doesn't have my sway back in it. So in order to do that, you pull the back up right here. You pull the back right, right there, you pull it up. You take the most in the middle, go to nothing at the side seams. The most in the middle, nothing at the side seam. And then it pulls, you can see here my side seam. If this had, if I could put a sway back in this, and you cannot put a sway back in a garment that's already made, you can see that now the side seam is straight. So that's how you know if you need to sway back. Plus, you'll have a puddle of fabric up here that you don't need. This is a knit, and I keep pulling it down so you probably can't see it that much. All right, so where do you put the sway back at? Measure down where your waist is. Mine's at 16 inches, and come up from your waist. I'm going to do it probably 14, 15 inches. You don't want it all the way down to your waist because the puddle is above your waist. Right? The puddle is above your waist. So now we're going to do the exact opposite of what we did up there on the round back. I'm cutting all the way across. I'm going to mark the seam allowance. And I'm going to jump it. I'm going to jump the seam allowance and cut the rest of the way. All the way to the seam allowance. You have to cut really, really close, but not through. If you do go through, just tape it back together. Okay? So now, instead of opening it up an inch, I'm going to cross it over 5 8 inch. Why 5 8 inch? Because I just happen to know that 5 8 inch always works for me. Start out at 1 half inch. 1 half inch is always a good place to start for round back inch wave. If you've never done it before and you're not sure, Start at a half inch. 
After you make the garment and you try it on, if you think, oh my gosh, I should have done more, then do three quarters of an inch, do five eighths inch. Make a lot of tops with a simple, simple pattern like this. When you get the fit really good, you can transfer it to any pattern you use in the future. All right, so here it is. This is my back pattern now. It's all done and ready to cut out. Has its round back up here and its sway back down here. You hold it up close so you can see the sway back. There's no green down there, but you can see how it's crossed over. You can see how it's crossed over, and then it comes out to the side to nothing. It's like a piece of pie, a triangle. Okay, then I cut off the extra paper on the back, just so it's not so heavy. You don't need all that extra on the back. Okay, so my back is done. I'm going to put my back up here on the board because I can. <laughs> Look at that. Are you ready to do the front now? The front, it's not hard. It really isn't hard, but it's more work than the back, especially on a raglan sleeve. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it out. The front is already placed on the fold. So I'm just going to cut it up that fold line and I'm going to cut it out on the 14 the entire piece. I'm not going to cut anything out at the 16. That's only the back. So we're going to do 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14. 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14. All right, so we're going to jump down into there. Sometimes the uh, lines cross over each other in a funny way. So you have to, if you can't really tell, get a colored pencil and color your line, and then you'll be able to tell. Okay, here's my front. Cut out exactly on the 14 by my upper bust 36 size 14, and I'm going to put an FBA in it. I'll be back. Well, you'll notice a little different setup in this clip. That's because the air conditioner has quit working in the former attic quilt room. It's 80 degrees in there. <laughs> so thank goodness I have this koala table out here now, and I can just use this leaf that lifts up and put a cutting board on it, and I can use it to show you how to Palmer Plush New Look 6217. I brought one of the tops up so you could see it made. These are the ones you like so much when I wear them. So let me show you some details. Here on the back is the keyhole opening. It's not really a keyhole, it's just a slit. And there is a hook and an eye. A hook and an eye right there so as I told you yesterday I am not going to do that in the one that I'm doing now I am going to place this center back on the fold I'm not going to make a seam there because I can get this over my head just fine okay so it's very very simple there's only two pieces there is one thing I did that I like but I don't like I put a very narrow hem here in the bottom and I think it looks really good for the blouse. It could be the length of it because you know I've got the roller coaster going on down here. <laughs> but when I sit down it kind of it rolls up and um, then when I stand up it wants to stay rolled up. See how it's kind of doing it already? So I think I will put a longer hem in the one that I'm making now. So this is what we're making. New look, 6217. We're going to put a full bust adjustment in it, even though it has a dolman sleeve. Let's get started on the front. We did the back yesterday. Now I'm probably going to be missing half of the things I need to do this, so <laughs> be patient with me. All right. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to cut off the sleeve. 
cut off the sleeve. Now a few of my videos back I showed you a DVD by Marta Alto from Palmer and Plesh. She shows how to do this in that video. She shows how to do all kinds of full bust adjustments in all different kinds of tops. So be sure and buy that DVD. It is very, very good. All right, so what I'm going to do is try to get a straight line going on. I'm going to line this up with my grid here. I'm going to line up the side seam right here, and I'm going to cut it straight up. I'll show you in a second. I'm going to cut it straight up, and I'm going to cut that right off. All right, so now here's the sleeve, and here's what's left. And here's the raglan sleeve that came off right there. Oh, now I forgot to do one little step. Before you cut it off, make some little marks. Okay, so I made a cross mark there. And I'm going to make a cross mark up here. Because this is going to look real different. It's going to look real different after the FBA is in it, you guys. So, you're going to want to know where you cut it apart. Okay, so see the little orange marks? We can match back up. We're going to have to put this back on when we get the FBA done. All right. What do we do next? What do we do next? Raise your hand if you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lady in the back. What is it we do next? That's right. That's right. You have to find your apex. Y'all are so smart. So we're going to line this up, we're going to put the center front of the pattern at our center front, we're going to put the shoulder, you know, where we think it should be, and we're going to mark our apex. So my apex, I don't want to poke a hole in this and draw on my blouse, my apex is right there in the vicinity. Now, I always go ahead and check it with the measurements. I know that I'm eight inches from apex to apex. I know half of that's four inches. I know that my apex is 11 to 11 and a half inches down from my shoulder. So I'm gonna measure that just to see if it's anywhere near where I think it's supposed to be. So we're gonna draw the 5 8 inch seam line. Now, Keep in mind that the seam allowance in every pattern is not 5 8 inch. So be sure you check your seam allowance uh, and make sure that it's not a quarter inch or a half inch. This is 5 8 inch. So I'm going to measure from that shoulder line. Just, I don't know, pick a place, not in the middle. I pick a place like right here by the neck. And I'm going to measure down 11 inches. 11 inches. Oh my goodness, and I just got that practically perfect. So 11 inches down and 4 inches over is where my apex should land. <laughs> That's where it should land. So I'm going to put an X there. And I'm going to make sure this is all straight. Be sure you're always working with straight lines. You know your, your straighter grain, your center front, your center back, those are all straight lines. Alright, so right there is my apex. And I'll show you the difference from where it is by measurements and where it is by holding it up onto me. Here it is right here. 4 inches in, 11 inches down, and I marked myself right there at that little mark right there. So four inches in, eleven inches down is right here. So that's where I'm making my apex at. I've got my apex marked. Now you have to draw three lines. Three lines. And they're all going to be drawn starting from my apex. That's right. You want me to put the camera down so you can see it instead of me? All right, now we need some weights, some weights. So I'm going to do like Peggy Sagers and just pick something up and throw it down there because my weights are in the hot room. <laughs> Except you won't be able to see. Let me see. Let's put this weight over here. I have this lined up on a straight line 
on my Ulfa cutting mat. I have my apex on a straight line on the Ulfa cutting mat. So I'm going to take my ruler, I'm going to take my friction pen that can be ironed off in case I screw this completely up. I can just iron off all these marks and start over. So we're going to draw from the apex all the way down through the hem. All the way down. Now we're going to draw from the apex up here into this arm that's been left by cutting the sleeve off. We're going to go about a third of the way up on that sleeve. It's not a sleeve, it's just a it's just an armhole right now. Okay? So let me move the tape so you can see. Here's the bottom of the sleeve. Here's the top. Up here, I drew my line to right here. From the apex all the way through that sleeve. Okay? Now, we're not going to cut all the way through the sleeve. We're going to cut two, but not through. We are going to cut all the way through the one going down through the hem. Now we're going to draw a line over here through the side because we are adding a bust dart to this. Look here. The pattern doesn't have a bust dart, but this does. See, there's my bust dart. And it's just a little bit down underneath this arm. So I'm getting ready to put this bust dart in this pattern. Do you have to have a bust dart? No. But you've got to put it there. And then if you're not going to use it, you're going to have to move it down to the bottom or somewhere else. Okay, so there's the line to the side. So from the curve of the arm, not, not from anything else, just the curve of the arm, I came down an inch and three-fourths is where I drew my bust line. It comes down a little bit at an angle. Okay, because I like mine a little bit at an angle. All right, so now what we're going to do is cut on these lines. We're going to cut straight up to the apex. Then we're going to cut, keep on cutting straight over here on this line to the sleeve armhole opening. We're not cutting over here to the side yet. We're cutting up here into the sleeve. Okay, so see here what I've cut. That's what I've cut. Up and over and stop at the edge. That's right. So now we are going to cut from the side. Now I'm going to cut the bust dart open. Start at the side, cut the whole way, whole way, whole way, whole way, whole way, whole way, just to the tippy tippy tip of that apex that you put on there. Just go to the very tippy tip of it. Alright, so now line this back up straight again. Put some weights on it. Use that hand cream. Use this tape. Alright, so now what are we going to do? Now we're going to play hinge, hinge me. We're going to play hinge me. Hinge me here, hinge me there. We can just move all around because we have we have a hinge here, and we have a hinge here. Hinge, hinge. This stays stationary. This part here that looks like a funny L, it stays stationary. You don't do anything to it. So I'm going to put that back down on there. Now, how do you know how much you need? How do you know how much you need? Well, if you've never done this before, and you don't know about Palmer Plush, the way you do it in the Palmer plush way is before you ever do any of this, you pin the front to the back as though you had sewn it together with a sewing machine. You pin it up the side seams and pin the shoulder. And there's a little more to it than that. You can watch videos on Palmer plush and how to do it. You mark the seam allowances. You put your scotch tape. I don't have to do that because I know how much I need. So then you would hold the pattern. Now I know you can't see me, sorry. Then you would hold... <laughs> <laughs> then you would hold the pattern up to your body and you would line up, you would put it on so the side seams would be on the side seam, shoulder would be on your shoulder and then you would pull it over and then the center front would not reach your center front. And so you would measure how far it is from the center front of the pattern to your center front and that's how much 
of a full bust adjustment you would do. So what you do is you get some paper, and I'm going to make it green so you can see it. Cut some strips. Remember the L part isn't moving. The L part is staying straight. I'm going to put something on it to hold it down. I don't want to put so much on it you can't see it. Can you see that okay? I think so. So we're going to put this piece of paper under here. It needs to be wider than one and a half inches. And we're going to put this piece of paper under here because that's not long enough. And then we're going to get some of this tape we're holding everything down with and we're going to tape that on. Make Use short pieces of tape. Short pieces. Don't pull off a great big long piece of tape and try to do from here to here all at once. You will have the biggest mess you ever saw. When you do that, the tape turns into a super powerful magnet and it pulls the paper up off the table and grabs it. <laughs> it is not a good thing. Okay, so little pieces of tape. Now, I am going to draw a line one and a half inch, one and a quarter inch, don't make it worse than it is, Joy, one and a quarter inch away. What if it was a knit? Would you do that if it was a knit? Yes, I would. I certainly would. I would do it if it was a knit. Now, I'm going to take this and turn it back around the proper direction, and I'm going to move it over to that one and a half inch line. Where is my needle? Where are my pins? <laughs> oh, I need to get this new sewing room all set up. Now be sure that you're cut all the way to the edge or it won't hinge good. You got to be sure you're cut all the way to the edge. Move this over here to that line you drew and make it straight and then put a little piece of tape up there, smooth it down, and put a little piece of tape down here, okay? Then cut some more tapes and tape the whole thing the whole way up. Tape it good, tape it good. You want this to stay. You're not going to be removing it, you're going to be keeping it there like it is in my missing pattern that nobody can find. <laughs> All right, let's look at what we've got now. Let's look at what we've got now. Let me see. I think I need to move you down a little bit more. All right. What we have now is a great big triangle. See the big triangle right here? Up into the armhole. We have a triangle up into the armhole. We are going to tape the paper in there, in that triangle. That triangle stays there forevermore. It's not going anywhere. We need that triangle there because that is extra material to go over our bust. And we need it. All right, so I filled that triangle in with paper. All right, so now we have another triangle right here. This triangle is our bus dart. This triangle we're going to keep as a bus dart because we need one. We need a bus dart when we do an FBA. Unless you move the bus dart down into the bottom, which you can, you can move this bus dart down into the bottom and then your bottom will just be much, much fuller. But that bus dart has to be there somewhere. One of you asked me, how do you make those tops with the fullness in the bottom? All you do is move this bus dart down into the bottom. Very easy to do. I'll show you how to do that on a different pattern. Okay, so now we have a bus dart. Our apex is up here. This is important. Remember this. When we cut this and moved it down, the part we moved down has a little bit of the apex on it. And the apex is moved down, way down there. It is an inch and three-fourths. 
that this has moved down even though we only added an inch and a quarter see so you don't want to play with this as your apex I hope you guys can see that good you do not want to use this area down here where you move you see where the dart is pointing it's pointing to where we move this piece of the apex down no 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 this will be pointing to your belly button you don't use that your apex is still up here we didn't you know do plastic surgery and move your apex down we have just moved the pattern down to give you more room for your bust but your apex is still up there where it started out so this is super super important you'll end up with a really crazy looking garment if you don't understand how to do this okay so we're going to draw a bust dart from this point and this point that's what we've opened up here that's how wide our triangle is we're going to draw from this point to our apex which is way up here and we're going to draw from this point to our apex which is way up there all right so this is what's called the designer's dart it's not the dart we're going to sew this dart is just going to show us where the opening of our dart needs to be and how to put the point of it in the center you don't want to sew your dart to your apex you know that you, you never sew your dart to your apex unless you want to look like you have snow cone bust so you come back off of that about an inch, an inch and a quarter. I'm going to come back about an inch and a quarter. That seems to be the magic number for me. I'm going to find the center of that area, if I can. That's not always easy to do. Let me see. How can I do that? I can go down here to where it's a half inch, and I can mark the center there. And then I can draw the center from there up through the point of the apex. And that way I can find the center. It's just playing, guys. Now I'm going to come down an inch and a quarter to right here. And that's where I'm going to put the point of my dart. Right there. It's going to be the point of my dart. So let's get a different color. All right. So now we're going to draw the actual bust dart that we're going to sew in. Still from this point and this point. I'm going to go up here to our inch and a quarter backed off and we're going to draw a bust dart to there. And then we're going to come over here and draw the other line of it. Okay, so see the red? Let me hold this up so you can see. See the purple line goes all the way to the apex. Not down here to this apex that we lowered down. You don't, that's not your apex. Your apex is up here where it started out. It stayed where it was. We moved off one and a quarter inch away from your apex and then we drew the bust dart in red. You have to figure out how to draw the point out here so your dart will sew together right. So you have to play like in the paper you're sewing the dart in. And that just is some more fiddling. You know it takes time to do this. It's faster to sew this blouse than to do this. But once you get it done, you can make two or three of these a day. And do you watch that girl, Alyssa? Her channel is called Thoughtful Creativity. And she's just an adorable young girl. I would love to do what she does back when I was her age. Oh, I would have had so much fun. But of course, that was the olden days. <laughs> okay. So I just folded that shut. I have just made the bus dart like I was sewing it together with the sewing machine. And you can see that out here on the edge, the pattern doesn't line up anymore. See that? Oh, and I'm getting ready to lose my battery. Let me get a new battery. All right, my battery went dead there, so we had to get a new battery. So I was showing you when you fold the bus dart in, you fold the bottom part up to the top part and crease it real good and then you have to fix this over here on your side seam because it's a screwed up mess now <laughs> and I happen to know there's plenty of room up here for my bus so I'm going to straighten that out all right how are we going to straighten this up usually you can just do it by hand I know I have plenty of room here 
Let me put the sleeve back on and see if that makes any difference in what it looks like. Let me put that sleeve right there. So that's going to line up right there. Right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's still right. So I am just going to mark this like this. So I am going to slice this side seam like that. So see how it looks now? See how it looks now? I sliced it. See? I sliced it even. I just drew a line from there down to here, smooth it in, and now I have my dark point. Very, 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 very important. If you don't put that on there, you are going to have a mess in the front of your blouse. And this is how much I cut off of the original side seam on the front. Alright, not very much. So I have my bust dart. I have my width. Bust dart, width, and extra length. I also now have to fix the hem at the bottom. Now Palmer Plush will tell you to chop this piece off and move it down. I don't do that. I just add more paper. And then I fix the hemline at the bottom. So you want to see me do that? Let me put the camera back down. Here's some paper. You gotta have paper. You gotta have it. You can use pattern paper. You can use this stuff. There's usually plenty in the pattern. So, why did this happen? This happened because you not only need more width because of your full bust, you need more length. You will notice in store-bought garments that the front of your blouse always hikes up in the front. This is why. You need more room in the front to go over your bust. You don't have a bust in the back. <laughs> okay? So, you got to be very sure you take care of that issue. So, this is now down. How far did that come down? That came down. See, you'd think it would be one and a quarter, but it's not. <laughs> that came down one and five-eighths. That came down one and five-eighths. So that's how much I'm actually, is that how much? One? Yeah, one and five-eighths. So I am just going to draw this line in here and extend this. This comes down to here and down to here. See? Extension duty. So I'm going to cut that hem off even now. Evening of the hem. There is the evening of the hem. And we're going to cut off the side so it's straight. Are you almost done, Joy? I actually am. I actually am almost done. Ta-da! I am now done. So then what I do is I come around to the back and I kind of flip this paper around and I cut off all the extra paper that I didn't really need. Because this is heavy paper. It's copy paper like you put in your copier. And it's a lot heavier than your pattern is, so it's kind of awkward. I'm actually not done. Does anybody here know why I'm not done? What do I have to do next? Who can tell the teacher? Hey, lady, you forgot. <laughs> yeah, all of you are raising your hands at the same time. <laughs> Aren't you going to put the sleeve back on? <laughs> That's probably a good idea. That is a real good idea. Okay, how do you put the sleeve back on? You can see now we have this really funky, really funky thing going on over here where I cut the sleeve off. See it? But see my little orange mark there and my little orange mark down there somewhere? I'm going to try to line those up now. You can watch me. Get rid of the extra green stuff. Put a weight on it. Close your rotary. Alright, we're going to line it up at the shoulder. Nothing changed at the shoulder. The shoulder's the same. So we're going to put it back up there at the shoulder. Don't tape anything down. 
Don't tape anything down until you have the entire sleeve on because this has to rotate now out here. It has to rotate out all the way out to here. See there? Now I have this diamond shape in here. I need some more paper. We have a funky diamond shape in there. Let's put some paper there. And let's put some paper there. And let's, we're going to line it up at the very top of the shoulder and we're going to line it up down here where it touches the side. Where it touches the side. Right there. That is where we're going to put it. So I'm going to tape it. I'm just going to put a teeny tiny itty bitty piece of tape. Itty bitty. Teeny weeny. Yellow polka dot bikini. Ah! Right there. Right there. Teeny weeny weeny. Then I'm going to line this piece up. I'm going to hold this down flat. You need something up here to hold this. And I don't have anything. So I'm going to put that. And hope you can still see. Can you guys still see? Put this cup down here. Now I'm going to line this up as close as I can to where it used to be. And I'm going to put a little piece of tape there. So now you can see, I'll show you up close in the camera, I'm filling in this funky diamond shape here. What does that mean? That means it has added some fullness to this sleeve. And you're going to need it. It isn't going to bother you a bit. You aren't even going to know you put it there. But if you didn't have it, it would pull from the sleeve across your bust. Just hold and tape and hold and tape and make sure everything is right. Buy yourself lots of invisible tape. Okay, so now I'm going to fold my bust dart up again because I've got paper sticking out there that shouldn't be there. I'm going to fold my bust dart up. I am going to cut this out like the shape it wants to be from when it was first a pattern. And then I'm going to come up here at the shoulder and I'm going to redraw that line right there because it's a little bit funky now. Alright, I'm adding a little more green paper up here at the shoulder because it changed this line from being straight to being a little bit curved up here. And so I am redrawing it. I'll show you what I mean. See how I redrew? Just made that straight again instead of having that little divot in it. And here's this funky diamond shape in the arm, in the sleeve. See? Yeah, it looks crazy. It looks like you have absolutely destroyed this pattern. <laughs> but you haven't. It will fit you so good you won't even believe it. Alright? So that's it. That's the FBA. First thing I've done at my koala table out here in my new setup and I closed my rotary cutter. So you know the back, we did the round back this way back and we've done the FBA. Mine was one and a quarter inch, and this is what it looks like. I'm still cutting paper off the back. I don't like all this extra paper. <laughs> you don't want to put tape on the back. You don't want to put tape on the back if you can help it, because you'll want to iron this pattern. I already ironed it before I started all this. But, you don't want to iron over tape. The Palmer Plush rule is tape on the front, no tape ever on the back. So when you go back to iron it in the future, you can iron all of this paper and it won't scrunch up. If you iron scotch tape, it is going to melt and go shh. <laughs> Not a pretty sight, let me tell you. Alright, the front is ready. The back is ready with the round back and the sway back. I have to find some pretty material and I will show you how I cut it out 
and how I sew it together. Although I know most of you don't need that, but for my newbies, my beginners, I will show you how easy this blouse is to actually sew together. It is really a nice pattern. And the neckline is wonderful. Oh, there is one other thing I do. There's one other thing I do, but you probably won't have to do it. You might. But one thing I always do, because these boat necks, they end up way out here on your shoulder. Let me see where this would end up. Yeah, way out here. And think 5 8 inch off of that. So I take a tuck in the neckline. And this is another messy thing that makes your pattern look even goofier. But it moves the neckline in. And it also makes it so it doesn't gape. I could have taken a little tuck in this pattern I'm wearing. I could have taken a little tuck in it, you can see. And it would have laid closer to my, my skinny part up here. See, where I'm just bone. <laughs> bone with skin on it. <laughs> okay. So if you're interested, I'll show you how I do this part, but like I said, most of you probably aren't going to need it. But I just happen to know I am. So let me roll my camera back down and I'll show you how I do this part. Okay, now remember, this is flat pattern making. <laughs> I've actually seen Peggy Sagers do this and she simply puts it on the fabric, on the on the fold and then she simply moves it this way a little bit and that's how she does it and she takes part of it out of the front and part of it out of the back do that do that that would be so much easier just line it all up straight move this over at the top like a quarter of an inch and then cut it out and that will take the extra out of this neckline I have never done it that way but you know what I think I'm gonna I think I'm going to try that. I think that would be a super good solution. I really do. So basically, what we're going to do, I need a longer ruler. From the bottom all the way to the top, I'm going to take off a quarter of an inch. Yep. Right there it is. I'll just draw it for you. Because the other way is cutting and slashing and adding more paper. And this way is much, much easier. You all know Peggy. If you don't, she's on every other Tuesday night. You can learn an awful lot from her. I'm not crazy about her patterns. Phyllis absolutely hates them and threw all hers away. <laughs> but I still like Peggy and I have learned a ton of stuff from her. For instance, this right here. Okay? So, that's what we're going to do. Let me draw that line. And that will shrink the front of this. There's more than one way to do most of these things, you guys. So you need to figure out what works best for you. I'll show you. You're going to need a pencil. And it's good to have a French curve. Or you can just trace. So I'm just drawing this neckline here. Now remember, I'm moving it over from center front to take the fullness out of the neck. Now, some of you are probably wondering why I can take this out of the center front and it not take away from the full bust adjustment that I just took all that time to put in here. When it gets down to the bust area, it goes from less than a quarter to less than an eighth to nothing. So you're taking out a very tiny bit. Plus, remember, you have all this extra over here that you added to the sleeve. And so when I take this out up here, it's just going to remove a little of this extra in the sleeve. So I don't think it's going to matter at all. So my center front is going to be the new center front. That's where I'm drawing that. And I'm going to mark it center front and fold. Two inches, two inches, two inches, two inches. All the way around. See how easy? You just can't get easier than this and it's fun. It's fun and you feel like a pattern person. See? Look. How nice is that? I'm not sure what the camera's picking up, but surely it shows that. 
And up here at the shoulder, I am going to mark 5 8 inch seam. And I'm going to write shoulder. And then I'm going to write front facing 6217 like that. Okay? Do the exact same thing to the back. Exact same thing to the back. Remember, we're putting the center back on the fold also. Okay? So I'm going to do that. You don't need to watch me do that. You do it exactly, exactly the same. You can see the fabric I chose out of my stash. I have center front right here. No, not center front. Center front's going to go there. This is the fold. This fabric is 45 inches. It's 100% cotton. Yes, it will have to be ironed. Fold. This is my front. I'm going to place it. Let me put it where you can see it. I'm going to place it so it's hanging over the edge here. And my red line is on that fold. And the bottom is on the fold. And that's how I'm going to cut this piece out. And I'm going to do the back the same way. I had to go and get some of my weights. <laughs> oh, I had a whole set of weights at my other house, you know. I had double everything. So this is a bucket of weights I put together to take to Lauren. So I'm just going to borrow them for right now. All right? So we're going to put the front down. Make sure, make sure, make sure, make sure that the back of your fabric is up here. The, the bottom piece is up where the top piece is. I have uh, cut off parts of my patterns many times because I did not check that. And it is not a fun thing to have happen. Okay. See? Simple, simple, simple. This is such an easy pattern. So much fun to sew. So why do you put so many weights? I don't know. I used to put a zillion pins. Now I put a zillion weights. And remember, it's flat pattern. So make sure you're smooth and nice and flat. And I need to pull that over a hair. There. Flat, flat, flat. Flat pattern means flat pattern. I'm going to go get the back. All right, here's the back with the round back and the sway back. And I'm going to move center front, center back, over. I have to do center back upside down just because that's the way they print it for some reason. So I'm going to pull it over a quarter inch. So it doesn't gape in the back. So this looks like it's hanging over a bunch, but remember, I have a 5 8 inch seam allowance on the back I'm not using. And I know I can get this over my head because I've already made it twice. So that's how come I know that. This is ready to cut out. One piece, two pieces, and then I will cut out the facings. Rotary cutters are our friend. But you have to have the proper surface underneath a rotary cutter. Don't ever use your rotary cutter on the tabletop. You will ruin it. The tabletop and the rotary cutter. <laughs> oh yeah. You should use a smaller rotary cutter, but I don't want to go in that hot room to get one. Now the back, I don't have to do anything to the length because we only lowered the front in the front part. The sides seem still the same. Okay? So that should be loose. Oops, right there. The cutters always, always get dull five seconds after you use them. See? Still dull. Go down. Go down. Go down. There. We are loose. All right, do I have to do any markings to the back? Yes, there's a notch up here. So let's mark this notch. Let's just put a slice right there on that notch. Do I have to mark anything in the neck? No. Do I have to mark anything down here? No. Because, um, well, I might. There's a dart there. It's not a dart. Mark your notches. Take your scissors and just put a little clip where there's a notch. I don't have to mark anything. 
So you can basically see what the back's going to look like on me already. <laughs> it's practically done. All you got to do is sew the shoulder seams and the side seams. And here's the back. There it is. See? Super, super simple. Don't you just love it? Don't you just love it? Oh, yeah. All right, let's get out the front. Boy, this, I saw a new girl. One of you told me about her. It's called Sewing on Saturday. Something like that. Something about sewing on Saturday. But boy, howdy, that girl is personality plus, and she sews a lot. Now, I didn't care for her color blocking. I'm not big on color blocking anyway, even what they have at the stores. And I have done a little bit of it. But uh, she makes very nice garments. And she has a whole bunch of fun showing them to you. And I don't know her name. If you look at my comments on yesterday's video, of course you're not going to know what that is because this isn't going up right away. <laughs> Let me see. Yesterday would be August 10, 2020. The comments, one of you left the name of the Saturday Sewing Ladies. YouTube channel. And then one of you told me about a YouTube channel where they show that new Bernina serger. They so show it in detail. And I do remember that one. That one's called, I'm marking the notch, I'm making a clip at the bottom of the bust dart, the top of the bust dart, and up here on the shoulder is another notch. Now there's only one other place I have to mark on this front piece. And that is the point of the bust dart. So for that, I'm going to use a pin. And I'm going to stick a pin right through that. Here's the apex over here. This is the bust point over here for the dart. For the dart. This is my apex. This is where the dart is going to stop. So now, and good luck with this. We're going to mark that point of the bus dart. And you have to have something that you can see. And the best thing to use for that is those friction markers. Not the friction pens, the friction markers or a really good white chalk. All right, here's the right thing. It's a friction color erasable marker. Not a pen. A marker. Okay? I buy these 20 at a time. I love them. I'm going to open this up and I'm going to find where I stuck that pin and do it very, very slowly or the pin will just pop right out. There it is. I can see where the pin is. So on both places, where it goes in and where it goes out the other side, I am marking a dot. All right? So we did dot duty. I'll hold it up and show it to you so you can see the dot. See the red dot? Can you see the red dots? I'm sure you can. So now what I do is I draw the dart with this erasable. <laughs> did she say erasable? Yes, it is erasable with an iron, with heat. Slap it down. Slap your ruler down. Mark these two little cuts you made over there at the other side of the dart. Slap your ruler down and draw a line. Slap your ruler down and draw a line. Now I have a dart I can see to sew. I'm going to turn it around and do it on the other side. Now, don't iron this until after you sew the dart in. Or you'll have to come back out here and do this again. I know. Ask me how I know that. Dear Lord, the things I've done and the years I've sewn, you'd think I'd know better. And I still screw up so much you wouldn't believe it. Okay, now my two darts are in there. This top looks like it's wide enough to go around me twice. <laughs> but see there? The neckline's 3 8 inch. Also, isn't that cute? Check to be sure. 
that all your seam allowances are 5 8 inch. It will say seam allowance is 5 8 inch unless otherwise noted. It is otherwise noted in this pattern that the neckline is 3 8 inch. Very important or you're going to end up with too big, too baggy of a neckline. So, love this fabric. Now I just happen to be wearing yellow today. Alright, so the back is marked. The front is marked. I'm going to cut out my facings. I'll go ahead and cut out this first facing. I don't need that anymore. I don't need that anymore. So, you come back up here to where you can see your fold, because you have to cut your facings on the fold. I'll just cut one because I haven't drawn it back yet. Center front. Line it up with the fold. Lay your facing down. Get your rotary cutter and cut it out. You can make it two and a half inches. I made mine two because I know I'm going to sew it down. I don't want it sticking in there very far. Ta-da! Ta-da! How cute is that? Front neck facing. To interface or not interface? That is the question. I interface my facings. Some people don't. There are interfacings that you would not want to interface anything with. They are so stiff and so scratchy and so harsh, but the one I use is wonderful. I have used many, many, many different kinds, many different companies, but this is my absolute all-time favorite for a cotton blouse or top that has facings and it is this one it is probably too shiny in the plastic let me take the little duo out Palmer and Plesh Perfect Fuse Sheer that is my favorite that is my very favorite I don't want my arms, if they had a facing, I don't want them stiff. I don't want my neckline stiff. I want it soft. But I want it to have a little bit of body. So, this is sheer. This comes in one yard lengths and it's 60 inches wide. So there's a ton of it here. This is a brand new one. <laughs> I don't have all messed up yet. But this is it right here. This is one little piece of it. And it's just so, so light as a feather. So I love it. So yes, I interface my front and my back neck facings. I have both of them here now. I am going to cut my inner facings. Then I have to go into the 82 degree room now and press the inner facing to the back of the facings. That's the only place in this entire blouse where I'm going to use inner facing. It's on the back of this and the back of this. My front and my back. We're going to place them on the fold and we're going to cut them out on the fold be sure you cut it tightly you don't want it to be bigger than your facing you don't want it to be bigger than your material facing so going to get fused on to this piece right there see perfect perfect that's that simple all right so that's the back I've got the back cut now I'm going to go iron the inner facing. You don't need to watch me do that. You just put it on your ironing board. Put a press cloth on top of it. Press it down. Then turn it over. Press it again. Make sure it's super, super glued on there. And then I'll set up my sewing machine and I'll show you how you sew this simple top totally together and put the facings in it. I'll be back. All right. That's the end of part one of... The new look 6217 pattern adjustment, cutout, sewing, so <laughs> So part two will start with me picking the fabric, laying out the pattern, cutting it out, and then you can watch me sew the whole thing together. So that video should be right next to this video. They'll both be dated August 12, 2020. This is part one. The other one will be... Part two 
and there's no more parts after that. Bye for now.